And also new here at four o'clock, the man convicted of killing a pal woman back in 1985 has been granted parole. Jerry Carpenter was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Myrtle Chapman Carpenter, beating her with a roofing hatchet after she confronted him, discovering he'd been stealing money. New at 4, WATE 6 on your side reporter Laura Hom learning more about what is next now in this case. She joins us now live here in the studio. Laura, do we know any details about his release or his parole? Mm -hmm. Well, no release date has been set just yet. However, this parole does come with restrictions. Mr. Carpenter must have either a halfway house in place or an approved release plan. He has he cannot have any contact with the crime victims and he'll be referred to a forensic social worker for assessment of any transitional needs. To Today's conversation is one steeped in disappointment and defeat. It seems as if that the victims have no rights. Myrtle Chapman's sister saying they're angry and sad, learning that their sister's killer has been granted parole. I'll always be angry because I really don't like the way it ended. I don't think it ended for justice. To get out of Both sat in on Jerry Carpenter's fifth parole hearing on Thursday, June 6th. Well, we're always going to speak up and, and say what we feel for her because she can't speak for herself. I don't believe that people like Jerry Carpenter, after viciously hacking someone to death. I don't think they deserve to be walking the streets. The sisters say they had a feeling he would be granted parole when the hearing wrapped. Oh my God. But they kept praying. And I hope they don't regret their decision, but I'm afraid they might. He took a life. He need to spend his life. Hearing the final news today, Miss Chapman's sisters say they're in shock and sick to their stomachs. We are thankful that he spent 34 years in prison. But we feel like he should have spent his life in prison. He's getting a second chance at life. He did not give my sister a second chance. She died at 59, and she didn't get a second chance. Now, Ms. Chapman's daughter, Ginger Zook, tells me that she plans on writing to Governor Bill Lee, expressing her feelings, concerns, and frustrations with Carpenter's release. And I did reach out to Mr. Carpenter's family since learning he's been granted parole, but I've not heard back from them yet. Guys? All right, thank you so much, Laura. Now, we're told by the Tennessee Board of Parole that it does not appear a release plan has been submitted just yet. From there, the State Department of Corrections investigates release plans because they'll be the ones supervising the offenders out in the community. And of course, we will continue to follow this story for you as soon as we know more. We'll be sure to share that with you on air and online.